This lesson deals with the natural and forced response of DC and AC circuits. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 26. In our previous videos, we looked at the response of RC and RL circuits when a DC input was suddenly applied at t equals t0. And we found that for any voltage or any current, this was the form of the solution for t greater than t0. The term B times e to the minus quantity t minus t0 over tau is sometimes referred to as the natural response, or the zero input response, or the solution of the homogeneous equation. What this indicates is what the circuit wants to do independent of the signal that's applied. The term A is sometimes referred to as the forced or steady state response. In other words, the DC input eventually produces a DC output. The two terms together, for t minus t0, less than five time constants, is usually referred to as the transient response. Although we use the DC source for this work, a similar type of result occurs for any type of a source. On the next page, we'll take a look at AC sources, which are sinusoidal. Suppose you have a linear circuit with an AC source in it, and a switch, and a time t equals t0 equal to zero, that switch changes state. And then we find the Norton equivalent circuit, where the Norton current is some sinusoid function, I'll call it I sub a times the cosine of omega t. Suppose you also know the initial voltage across the capacitor at t equals zero minus and zero plus. Let's write the differential equation for this circuit. The current that enters the node is I sub n. What leaves is V divided by R thevenin. And then what leaves in here is going to be C dV dt. I replace I Norton by its sinusoidal expression of I sub A cosine of omega t. Divide both sides of the equation by C. Let's have dV dt. V of t divided by R thevenin C. And then I sub A divided by C cosine omega t. Where R thevenin, C, I sub A, and V0 are all known values. This is my first order differential equation with the first derivative of the voltage, the voltage itself, and then the forcing function. Solving this differential equation is quite long. It takes several pages. Let me just give you the answer and then talk about what it means. This represents the complete response of our voltage V of t. As t approaches infinity or five time constants, this term will vanish, and we call that our natural response, what the circuit wants to do naturally. And once this term drops out, we're left with the force response, which is that we're getting a cosine function out for a cosine function in with a change in amplitude and a change in angle. As you can see on the last page, the transient response, which is the natural response plus the force response for t less than five time constants, is a fairly complicated expression and quite difficult to solve for. There is software will allow you to look at this result numerically, and they could determine what effect it might have on your design. But in general, the natural part of the transient response usually isn't very useful. It's something we just have to wait for it to die out. For AC circuits, we'll find the force response to be quite useful. You should note that the frequency of the output is the same as the frequency of the input. They're just simply an amplitude and phase change as a result of passing through the circuit. What we'll take a look at in the next chapter is an easier way to predict the force response besides solving the differential equation. This is the natural and forced response of DC and AC circuits.